okay velocity. Well, what is velocity? Well, velocity is um, basically the change in your position over some time period. So velocity is the change in an object position. over some time period. Okay, well, um, what does that mean? What is a time period, for example? Um, right, so a time period is, you know, a duration of a process. And the change in an object's position is the distance traveled in the process. Okay, so this is technically the average velocity, by the way. Um, but, it, I mean, this is the basic idea behind velocity. It's how far you go in, a, um, in an amount of time. Um, we'll measure that in, say, feet per second. That means you go, let's say you have 10 feet per second, that means you go 10 feet for every one second. All right. And that's all the velocity is. How far you go after a second. Or if it's miles per hour, it's how many miles you've traveled after an hour. Okay, so that's basically what that means. Um, this ends up being the directed speed. That is, uh, remember we had before um, x is equal to plus or minus the absolute value of x, let's say. This was your distance from your origin. And the plus or minus was your direction. Was it left or right? Um, here with the velocity, uh, we see here that we do, what we have is instead plus or minus the absolute value of the velocity. The absolute value of the velocity is your speed. That's how fast you're going. And the plus or minus tells you are you going left or are you going right. Okay, so uh, the same sort of thing. If you're moving left, if you were farther away from the origin and you're getting, if you were 30 feet to the right of the origin and you ended up 10 feet from the origin in two seconds, you'd be moving minus five meters per second or feet per second. Um, that's all that means. Uh, you might look up here, and we'll have to try to look at this a little bit more, but uh, this is talking about uh, the change in position. Delta means change. This triangle thing is called the delta in Greek. It's the Greek D. And so delta x is the change in position, and delta t is the change in time. So if you're me measuring times on your stopwatch, this was 10 seconds, this was 12 seconds, and your delta t would be 12 minus 10, which is 2 seconds. Okay? So that's all the deltas mean. Um, F and I, so XF is the position at the end, and XI is the position at the beginning of a process. Okay, so you have those two um, things there, you add or subtract them, that's all that means. So let's put that to work a little bit, right? Uh, to see what this sort of means. All right, so let's say we've got a seashore. The origin is you standing here, right? Uh, you're orange, and you're looking out here, and you see a boat, okay? The boat is here. Obviously, the boat is not at zero, at t equals zero, because if it was here, then the boat would have some problems. But you see a boat out here, so that's some distance x0, let's call it, at 
whenever you first see it. Okay, we'll call that time zero. So I've got zero minutes and come up here, this is x zero. All right, so that's our initial position. And we watch the boat go away from us, go directly away from shore. After one minute, it's a little bit farther out. And after two minutes, it's even farther out. And if we were to draw a line through this, that slope ends up being the velocity. Right? That slope is going to give us the um, speed of the object. So for a straight line, we can always find a straight line of position versus time. We can always find the velocity just by looking at the slope. Um, and, and so what we'd like to do is we'd like to figure out what these x's and t's are. We're going to use this part here and this guy here, right? Um, now we can read that a little bit. Right, so this is ti, it's the time for t1, it's the time for part 1, and this guy is, or let's call it i and f, that would be better since we're using this guy there, this is tf. This is one minute, this is two minutes. Start of the process, end of the process. Um, come over here, look at the same thing. We have xi, which is whatever distance this is. We have xf, which is whatever distance this is. Okay, so we take those two distances and we subtract them, and um, we end up with the velocity. Um, this is a little cleaner. So basically we're taking this spot here to figure out the slope of the um, position graph. The slope of the position, position graph tells you how fast you're going, and that's your definition of the average velocity. It's so your directed speed. We can talk a little bit more about that later if you'd like. Um, but this is basically all we mean, right? If this is one minute, right? This is one minute here. This is two minutes there. So this delta t is equal to one minute. And this is, I don't know, 100 feet. So we go from, let's say, 700 feet from shore to 800 feet from shore then this velocity here is 800 feet minus 700 feet over 2 minutes minus 1 minute, which is equal to 100 over 1 feet per minute. Right? So the time period per um, unit time, in this case the units, since it's feet per minute, are minutes. Uh, a lot of times it'll be feet per second. A lot of times it'll be miles per hour. Um, you, had, you just have to keep in mind that it's in the units what the unit time is. Right? Uh, I guess that makes it sound a little bit banal, um, but it's something that uh, people get wrong. It is in this, we're measuring in miles per hour. Um, the speed is how many miles you go in one hour. That's all. all right. So I hope that's ready, or I hope that's um, going to be useful for you. I'll come back and do an example based on the, on the right, the race problem that we were talking about earlier, and then we'll go and talk about the acceleration. Bye now.